Overkill does not begin to describe the list of components <laughs> here behind me. Hey ladies and gentlemen of the internet, Adrian here for Digital Dojos, and today we are going to be building my new main rig. Gaming PC, editing PC, main workstation, whatever you want to call it, we're building it today. And just to start off this video, yes, these components are entirely overkill, and I'm probably not even going to maximize <laughs> everything that there is in this build, but that was the sole intent of this build. I, I honestly did originally walk in to go for a 4090 graphics card and get that upgrade. Ended up walking out with a whole new build, <laughs> as you do. But at that point, since I was committed, I was basically all in, and I was just going to go with some of the top of the line parts because something I've been trying to do more, especially in the world of tech, is like buying within reason like things that will last me longer and have a lot more of a upgrade path or. Um, just kind of room for expansion. So kind of accounting for not necessarily what I only need right now, but potentially down the road and, and kind of splurging a little bit for sure. So let's jump right into the components. The star of the show here is the ROG Strix uh, 4090 for sure. Uh, without a doubt, this is the OC edition, 24 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, fancy gamer RGB for all the extra frames. Uh, I had originally walked in knowing I wanted a 4090 card and thankfully this shop that i was um, uh, shopping at central computers here in san francisco had a couple in stock unfortunately they had just ran out of the white edition of this which i was originally going to go with an all-white build but i'm the type who's very impatient <laughs> and rather than ordering it online or getting it from another store i flipped my aesthetic choices and i will be opting for a all black build this time fully murdered out so yeah uh went with this rock tricks card here uh one of the top of the lines and that really is like the, the heftiest component. I think that ran alone at like 2100 bucks just for the graphics card. Um, outside of that, that's going to be housed on the ROG Crosshair X670E uh, gaming motherboard from Asus. So you can see kind of that Asus theme across the way because powering it all will be the ROG Core 1200 watt platinum two power supply. Uh, in terms of the brains and the CPU here, I went in for a Ryzen 7900 originally, uh, 7900X to be specific, and opted in the end for the 7950X, so paying up a little more for that upgrade and really kind of going top of the line since we're already doing that with a lot of the other components here. Um, also, the shop in question, Central Computers, had one age July 4th sale going on in some of these components, so some of them were discounted as is, and then they had a CPU motherboard combo bundle deal. So if you bought one of the newer 7000 series uh, CPUs, and a motherboard, you saved a little bit there as well, so worked out. Now, uh, small accoutrements here, Corsair DDR5, uh, 64 gigs, 6,000 megahertz of RAM, so taking advantage of that new DDR5 memory, exciting to kind of have that in this build, uh, and then the Kraken Elite NZXT RGB fancy uh, CPU liquid cooler there, AIO, um, and that's going to be cooling off the uh, Ryzen 7950X. Now, all of that is going to be housed in the NZXT Elite H9 in black. It is a mid-tower dual-chamber case. Uh, I opted for this case even though I've told myself every time I've built a PC recently that I'm going to opt for something outside of NZXT. Somehow, they always drag me back in. My last four builds have been in NZXT cases. Uh, and when they came out with this H9 Elite, it's something that I was a really big fan of. And it was a little bit different than the O11 Dynamic, which you see a ton of builds out there have. So I wanted to kind of step away from that O11 <laughs> crowd and go with something else, uh, in this case, back at NZXT with this H9 Elite. So happy to kind of build in this and see how I like it with its all kind of glass uh, look here. So with that, I think it's time to jump into the build. For those who dare. And talk about a presentation for a motherboard. Uh, but you got this plastic cover here that will um, imagine unveil the motherboard in all of its glory. And this is like the perfect kind of color scheme to go with this build that we have planned. Let me turn this sideways so you can get a better shot here of the motherboard uh, in all its glory. And uh, I guess the first thing will be to kind of get this out and use the kind of box as a platform and build station as it is. Oh, and it has a nice little cradle here for the entire board, which makes this easy. So this here is the main board. Pretty hefty there. Uh, and then within it here, we have a couple items. We have one, looks like this is a USB stick that I imagine is for like firmware or 
uh, updates or if you need to restore the system, I imagine something to that effect. Um, definitely the first premium motherboard I've bought personally. Uh, in the past, I've kind of like, and this is something that, you know, depending on your budget, very early on, you'll always like skip out on certain parts. And like usually in the motherboard, I've always just kind of gone like what's best in the kind of low to mid tier. Um, this time I consciously opted for something that was a bit more premium, has a lot of wiggle room and growth. And then here we have, this is the PCIe 5 uh, M.2 card. So I believe this is like a PCIe card that you can install to get more M.2 storage. So even, you know, further expanding your options outside of these standard slots that are on the motherboard. So, okay. We are going to pretend like I didn't hit pause on that whole last portion of the video. Uh, but yeah, magically the 7950X <laughs> CPU is installed. I went with 64 gigs, so these are two 32 gig sticks at 6,000 megahertz. Um, I was told by the employees, and again, I don't know too much about this since I don't really keep up as much with the latest and greatest in hardware, but there is some issues with DDR5 right now if you go beyond 64, because this board can definitely support it. And while I always opt for more RAM than less, uh, 64 is kind of the baseline where I, what I use nowadays and, and want in my builds. Um, so while it's nice and I have the ability to go up, it'll be a future upgrade. I was told that there is some issues right now where like if you run beyond 64, you don't get the full speeds of it. Something to do with the new boards and DDR5 as a spec. So I'm going to have to look a little bit more into that. But nonetheless, I am excited to install the Dominator Platinum <laughs> RGB stick here with all it's gamer glory. Uh, and I'm gonna wanna make sure that I install in the appropriate slots here because depending on the orientation or how many sticks you have, you the slot orientation where you install them does matter. All right, time to get the case out. So we transfer the motherboard in there. H9 Elite. This case is a the beefy one, that's for sure. No, yeah, really just lifted. Don't know why that felt harder than it was. Anyways, there's the side panel, taking it off, setting that aside here. And inside you have this box, which I'm assuming is just gonna include some of the additional accessories and peripherals. So it looks like this is the Top frame for oh nice it's like acrylic top frame here. I wonder if that's just so you can swap this out up here. Uh, but yeah, so that looks like for I imagine the top if you have a different size AAO. Yes, yeah, sorry, these are 120 millimeter fans, so three here and then the rear fan. Uh, and you have a couple other accessories on the back here. We go ahead and flip the case. The opposite side panel on this is all mesh, so it'll allow for better flow there as well. Let's go ahead and take the thumb screw here and pop this out as well. Just lift. You can see the rear of the case, you have the brackets here, cable management, whatnot. And then H9 series, and again, expect this just to be yeah all the additional kind of screws and other bits and bobs and i think now i'm going to just kind of transfer the motherboard in here and start kind of getting the build going not gonna lie with all the lighting kind of going on right now for the shoot plus it just being kind of summertime and hotter in the city uh it's getting hot here is what i'm trying to say in the studio but i have moved the uh build up here to the workstation side and gonna kind of prop it up so we can start wiring all of the AAO and all the cables, power supply, and all that fun stuff. Oops. For the ASMR fans out there. That one wasn't as satisfying, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so next up, we got to unbox this chunker of a power supply. Again, this is the 
Asus ROG Thor 1200 watt, uh, 80 plus platinum power supply, which just weighs a ton and feels like a brick. Um, in this case, they have a uh, PSU bracket right here, I believe, and I should be orienting it, so I believe the fan goes out to the back rather than blowing directly, obviously, on the motherboard. Yep, all the fun power cables and whatnot are all in here. Power supply, which when I originally got this, I did not even realize um, it has a OLED screen on it. Comes the plastic, and here we have it, and there is that OLED screen right there, so that little portion right there will show i believe like power consumption uh you have some gamer rgb on here and you're fully modular as you can see portion of the psu for all your inputs and outputs uh and then we're just gonna mount the power supply like so kind of and this thing is hefty this thing is like buckling the <laughs> little bracket here um See, obviously the thing like the OLED display is nice and actually in this case will work out because normally you wouldn't even be able to see that and depending on your case. But in this case, since the top panel of the Elite is a glass panel, you'd actually be able to look top down to see the actual uh, PSU wattage or usage there. I'll be honest, one area when it comes to builds that I don't put a lot of time into that I probably should is like cable management, especially these like trays to me if it's like out of sight, <laughs> out of mind, but I'll probably take a couple of zip ties once everything is wired and try to clean it up a bit. Uh, I am going to be removing this. This is the H9 Elite has like a standard old school hard drive. So if you have like standard drives, you can mount them in here. But if you just want to kind of clear up space, uh, you have a lot more room here in the back. Very spacious case if you remove that bay um, you can also use these the back of this uh swinging door here to mount like standard sata drive so um you can just flip it like that and i'll be hidden right behind and then here we have them side by side my current build which honestly fully functional minus me taking out the nvme's which i'm about to do i have a spare nvme drive that's like a 500 gig that I got on sale on Amazon that I'm probably going to throw in here. That way, this is like a fully operational machine still. We'll just need a fresh install of Windows. And then I'm going to transfer over those drives to the new build. Now for the main attraction. The 4090. <laughs> and here you have it. Hey, yeah, and this thing is massive has that kind of red blue and black theme going for it in this case um additionally got all the additional cables under here i imagine patient it feels like a republic of gamers trading card that's where we're at with dps nowadays because this thing is a behemoth of a card so yeah here we have it in all its glory talk about a cooling unit on that uh here's the bottom of the card here you have a display port four display ports to be exact and in this case you're getting the extra hdmi port as well so five ports there on the back side so that behemoth of a card is in however i definitely either want to go with a vertical mount uh, down the road or like get a proper anti-sag bracket it came with this like screwdriver slash anti-sag but as you can see clearance wise no way that's helping at all so i want to get like a proper anti-sag bracket for this uh behemoth of a card so hear me out this is jank but the pcie slot is supporting that back weight at least for right now pretty well okay i'm not gonna lie wiring all of that took a minute and even then i still think that there's probably some loose cable fan that's probably not gonna work because i'm not 100 percent sure i got everything properly connected uh but i guess we're gonna find out here in just a second 
All right, PSU's on. Only one way to figure out how everything went. We got fans. We got lights. Everything seems to be spinning and lit, <laughs> which is a good sign. Good sign. Windows is loading. Mind you, there'll be no drivers or anything installed, so the resolution and everything is gonna be all over the place. We are in business. All right, Internet, time to recap this overall build process and kind of wrap this all up. It's been two days since the build has been complete. Uh, kind of fast forwarding here. Um, first night, completed the build. It was like one in the morning. I literally posted it, made sure it turned on, made sure I didn't screw anything up, and then basically shut it back down and called it a night. Yesterday was the first day I actually got to use the machine and do some stress tests, get some benchmarks, all that fun stuff that you do after you first build your machine and get it all working and running and making sure everything is, you know, running as it should. Uh, and now kind of some post-build thoughts and sentiments going forward, things I want to do, upgrades, lessons learned along this way, uh, and yeah. <laughs> that being said, in terms of performance, how is it running thus far? Like I said, it's only been kind of day two going on day three here, but I did run some initial benchmarks. This is by no means like a gamer's nexus video, but just standard benchmarks. 3D Mark Time uh, Spy came in at 24,956, which I believe rates like better than 98% of the results that are out there on the board in comparison to where my specs are at. And then Citibench R23 a multi-core score of 29,542 and a single core score of 1,475 points on my Ryzen 7950X 3D. Again, it's a 16-core processor, which again, ranked very, very high, literally right behind the Threadripper in terms of like overall performance, which is expected <laughs> at that level. So all in all, in terms of like the general benchmarks, um, it ran and I it produced numbers as expected. Obviously, I'm sure you can squeeze out more performance here in terms of optimizing, overclocking, and all that good stuff. But I always like to kind of just do this as a base level. I also installed a couple of games yesterday and, and kind of quickly ran through some old titles and some new titles as well, just to kind of see where it landed with this new 4090 card in here and the new processor. Um, running games like Cyberpunk on Max RTX, I think they call it like overdrive settings, basically like pushing this thing to its limits in Cyberpunk. Uh, ran also really, really well. Uh, and to no surprise, I think it dropped down to like 50 at the lowest frames, but ran right around like 55 to 60 frames per second. It wasn't a constant 60 plus, but it was a hundred percent playable in all specs for something like that. When you're maxing out all of these settings to the max entirely. Um, and again, mind you, this is me playing at a 3440 by 1440 resolution. I have a really like, weird resolution due to my monitor here, but um, it handled all of that like a champ. And it's all what I would call playable. When it comes to like playing titles in my gaming test, it's really just, it's fun to kind of max things out and see just what's like the limit of stuff like this and the hardware. But truthfully, like I, while I do tend to run my games at ultra or high settings, I'm not pushing every slider or cranking every setting on into the max. So for majority of my titles, for example, the most recent new gen title I'm playing is Diablo 4. Even with the settings cranked out max there again, ran at 200 plus frames per second. So more than satisfactory for my needs in terms of my setup and what I have going on here. Um, I'm not much into like Valorant and, and CSGO or those type of games nowadays, but again, I'd imagine I'll probably try to get some specs on that if I can here and throw that in. Uh, runs all of that very, very fine <laughs> as well as you can imagine. But nonetheless, what I'm trying to say from a gaming perspective, this is gonna handle everything that I'm playing. It's gonna handle anything that I can throw at it right now. And um, with exception, I'm sure there's a couple games that might even remotely get close to like crippling this type of hardware. With that, I want to kind of quickly end here by recapping some of my overall build highlights and things I noticed throughout this. One, building in the H9 Elite, which yet again is a time that I said I was not going to build in an NZXT case. And here I am. I have the H9 Elite, the H7, the H5, and the H1. Um, I have to 
truthfully diversify in my case options next time I build a rig. But nonetheless, I am happy I went with the H&M Lee in contrast with I was either going to go with a height case or a um, Lee and Lee 011, like most people have <laughs> typically run with. Um, the H9 Elite sits perfectly in the corner of my desk because my desk is an L setup. So it really does get to display all the components really, really well. It provides that kind of seamless glass look. The only thing now is like I'm afraid to ever touch the case or move it because like fingerprints get <laughs> smudged very easily there and I have to keep it clean. Uh, but building in it from a perspective of just somebody who doesn't build as often but is, knows my way around a PC was was really well. It was really easy. A lot of quick, uh, convenient tool list designs in there to kind of take things apart and get them out of your way to make it easier to build. A lot of easy, intuitive stuff like the magnetic door that doubles as a um, hard drive slot uh, tray for like SSDs and whatnot. Um, the removable bay for like standard hard drives. It allows for a lot of room and flexibility as how you want to kind of build your build depending on the pieces and hardware that you have. You have options to kind of change the fan configs. I've kept mine in the default kind of layout so I didn't move my rad to the side. Uh, my rad is top mounted or my AIO is top mounted I should say with the Elite Kraken and then I am probably going to be adding some more fans and whatnot to this but overall like I said in terms of building in it it was a breeze. Super easy really easy to maneuver around and it comes with some basic accessories in terms of depending on the type of build that you're going for and other stuff that you can buy for example if you want to do like a vertical mounted gpu and whatnot so h9 elite overall very very happy with the overall build quality and the overall thermals and just the airflow design here the temps i'm getting on top of like the speeds and benchmarks idle temps much much better than my previous h7 case obviously this is all new hardware but even with this new hardware i'm getting really really great low idle temps while also simultaneously getting really great ambient or low to nothing noise from the case and the fans right now in nzxt cam i haven't even adjusted any custom fan curves yet it's all set to the silent profile so that obviously adds on to the fact why everything is so whisper quiet while still being uh, overall like a very cool build which is nice to see um, so yeah, I'm sure there's future tweaks and optimizations I can do there down the road and uh, kind of play around with that fan config. That leads me to the last part of what are the kind of future upgrades and changes I want to make to this overall build. One, like I just mentioned, the fan config is the thing that I want to kind of tweak, mess around with, see what's kind of best overall setup. I've been watching a lot of different YouTubers and content creators on how they built out on their Asian Elite to kind of take some notes and see how I might want to do it. Right now, I know for a fact I do want to change the rear 120mm fan to one of their other duo fans to kind of complete that look with the RGB. Um, and I'll probably either go three 120 or two 140 fans on the bottom to add and promote better airflow. So to, I think, intake air from the bottom, push it up through the GPU across the motherboard, and then out through the top uh, AIO is probably the plan right now. I might experiment to see if side mounting the AIO uh, and then putting the three fans on the top is a better overall look and feel. I know you have that top glass look, which is really nice for the H9 Elite right now. And right now, all you can see is the radiator. So if you do the three fan configs, it looks a little different. Um, Push-pull configs, there's a couple different options there that I can experiment. So I want to see what uh, what we have room to do and, and see what that affects thermal-wise and config overall. But right now, as a stock setup, uh, I can't complain. Uh, in terms of other hardware upgrades down the road, in, in, in no particular order, I want to eventually max out the RAM to 128 gigs. Um, I do want to expand and get better storage in here. This, lastly, um, in terms of the GPU, just decide whether or not I'm going to be vertically mounting it or what I'm going to be doing there. Yeah, that overall wraps up my sentiments in this build. Outside of that, I am super, super happy with how everything turned out aesthetically, performance-wise, tech-wise. Um, everything pretty much for the most part went smoothly. Anyhow, I am privileged, honored to even have the capability and the capacity to try out and have all this hardware in my build. I'm excited to take advantage of it down the road and continue to push it and try new things and continuously upgrade this build. And I uh, would love to hear your comments and thoughts in the section down below on things that you may recommend or want to try out or see or curious about. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like it, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit that like button, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.